going to run the refrigerator off of the biogas, so I'm putting a couple of bricks just to give a little bit of gas pressure. And I open the valve here, and so this is our gas line coming down from the gas collector on the porch. Come on into the garage where we're doing the experiments. <coughs> In Cairo, we bought this metal tube with a valve on it for doing these experiments. Uh, any valved uh, metal tube would work. And you can see when I turn on the gas. Yeah, well, that's a good one. Now, we don't need a large flame for the refrigerator. In fact, this candle flame size is about right. We really want to consume no more than about one liter of gas per minute so that we can run the refrigerator. But that's it. That's the flame. And we take this flame and we place it Well, that's it. That's all you have to do. I just adjust the flame so that you can, I don't know if you can see, yeah. What we're looking at is we're looking at the back of a propane refrigerator. Originally, this was on the back, and I just removed this so that you can see how the refrigerator works. We've put the flame down here at the bottom of this chimney. The chimney is just a tube. And the fire is in that tube, as you can see here. So what happens is the flame goes into this tube directly, and it heats this tube up, and the exhaust gases come out here. Next to the chimney, there is another tube which contains water and ammonia and a little bit of hydrogen. And the water and ammonia fluid is mixed in this chamber here, and this chamber then supplies the, from down here, supplies the mixture to a secondary tube. As you can see, it comes from the bottom of the tank, and it goes down and around and up the side of the chimney through here. And as the chimney gets hot, this tube, because it's next to the chimney, also gets hot, and the ammonia and water begin to separate because they have different vaporization points. So that small candle flame that we introduced there only is used to heat the chimney tube so it can transfer the heat to the water ammonia mixture. The ammonia then begins to vaporize and it goes through this heat exchanger which is basically a radiator and what happens there is some condensation. It begins to lose its heat but of course the water has fallen back that's the thing about the, uh, the mixture is the ammonia has come up before the water and as it cools down it begins to become a liquid uh, and the liquid water leaves and the ammonia vapor which is cooler now travels inside the refrigerator box where it meets with an expansion valve and whenever you ex expand a uh, a vapor that's under pressure, of course, it becomes an endothermic reaction and it takes heat away, so it cools down the inside of the freezer compartment and then begins its journey back down through these coils and this heat exchanger and becomes liquid once again and mixes with the water that's fallen down through back in the chamber. And then the process begins again. The liquid uh, mix of ammonia and water then travels down and goes through the separation process again. And as long as there is heat supplied to the chimney, it's just going to keep going over and over and over again infinitely. There's no moving, no moving parts, no compressor, nothing mechanical to break. So these can last 15 years. What usually goes wrong in these refrigerators is eventually the metal begins to rust and if there's a leak then you have to replace whatever part has rusted out or broken. But if you keep it in good condition, because there's no moving parts, it's one of the simplest technologies for refrigeration known to the human race. It's been in use for over a hundred years. 
and any source of heat will work. Biogas, a candle flame, a kerosene wick, propane, and electricity. So this refrigerator has a plug, and the plug is simply going to a heating coil right here, and that heating coil is just uh, wires going around the chimney, so the electricity, just like an electric blanket, is heating up the chimney, which is transferring its heat to the heat pipe where the ammonia and water separate. So it's really, how do you get the heat now? If you see the sun coming in now, if we had a solar concentrator that was following the sun and focusing the heat on the chimney, we could use the sun to heat the chimney to heat the heating pipe. So there's a lot of different ways with a refrigerator like this, it's called an absorption refrigerator, to be heated and therefore powered. Like we say, electricity, the least efficient way, the biogas flame, candle flame, and of course solar concentrated power could do it. Now when I touch this, it's hot now to the touch, and this is becoming hot. When you first start these refrigerators, it generally takes about a half an hour for you to see any temperature drop, and it takes about an hour to get down to freezing. So what we have here is we're showing that in the room right now it's 14.7 degrees Celsius and inside the refrigerator freezer compartment where I have the probe we'll see in a second what the temperature is it's 10.1 degrees Celsius inside the freezer compartment. Now we want to get down to negative 10 or negative 12 degrees so we can make ice and refrigerate. We're gonna check out how long that takes to happen so Let's look at the time now and set a timer going. It's now 2.14 in the afternoon, and we will come back and see how many minutes pass before we begin to see a temperature drop. Should be another about 15 to 20 minutes from now. We should see this 10.1 begin to go down as long as we have good <coughs> gas burning here. Let's take a look at the inside of this. There is a freezer compartment here where I have a tray with liquid water for making ice. My temperature probe I have in the freezer compartment and I can actually put it anywhere in there. Then there's the refrigerator compartment down here. Um, the weakness of these refrigerators is that they're not well insulated so they lose heat very quickly and that's a flaw because you could really save on a lot of gas if you could just cool it down once and then turn off the flame and then let it hold its, its temperature but it has very thin walls and not very good um, insulation and not a very good seal here and that is the the crime in the way these things are designed because they'd be much more efficient if they were designed to hold the the temperature uh, down. This here, by the way, this is an indicator of whether we have a good flame and when it touches the green it means that we have uh, a good flame and we're just about there. And then there's a spark ignition here to light the gas, piezoelectric, and then there's the, you can adjust the size of the flame if you were using propane and whether you're using electricity or gas is this dial here. It's made by Domatic. It's originally an American company that is now manufacturing in Sweden. And they've been doing this for over a hundred years. And that's about it. If we come back here, we see that if we were using propane, the propane would go up here under pressure and then this valve would control how much propane according to a thermostat and that would then go down in to where we've put the flame but we're not using that because the biogas has a very low pressure and so this pressure regulator wouldn't work with the biogas so we're bypassing that if you have uh, higher pressure gas bottles then you would use this fairly uh, sophisticated system here and this is the electricity to heat if you were using the electricity and you switch to there, then you would regulate between the temperature here and here. So all this stuff here on the top is related to if you're using electricity or if you're using a propane or butane cylinder. We're not, and that's why we went into the chimney 
directly.